Today we're going to talk about life in federal prison and I'm going to share a few tips and tricks to ensure that your experience is incredibly productive as it was for me. So let's get started. Hello everyone, it's Justin Caproni with White Collar Advice. Thank you for joining me and I'm going to jump right into some tips and tricks. And this video stemmed from a call that I received this morning. I received a call from a defendant who was in the federal prison parking lot and Uber uh, had taken him to self-surrender to federal prison and he said hey but I'm going in in like 15 minutes I downloaded your book a couple of days ago at White Collar Advice I read it thank you I have a better understanding um, can you chat with me for a few minutes I'm like of course I'd be happy to so I shared a few tips and tricks with him and I thought they were valuable and I'm quickly going to share them with you so number one a, a, a tip you can't do anything great in prison you can't rebuild your network write a book lose weight reconnect with your family build a business, all of which is possible in prison. You can't do it if you're having altercations with staff and fellow prisoners. So something that I wrote about in Lessons from Prison um, was an altercation that a prisoner had with some other prisoners and how it led to problems with staff. And I get a number of these messages. So I got all these Mac products in my home and occasionally I'll get a text message from someone, a wife or daughter or son that will say, my father's in the shoe or the hole. Um, something happened, we're not sure, uh, we're worried, can you help us? And sometimes when I hear the story, it's as easy as a problem with some inmates that led to running to, to staff. So in the story in Lessons from Prison, for example, and this is pretty pervasive, some prisoners, even the white collar offenders, like to make their mark, to assert their authority, which is foolish in much of the time. Your highest value is getting home to your family, okay? It's not asserting your authority in the TV room, room that many fellow prisoners rule like it's their fiefdom. They will get there in the morning. They will, you know, be there all day and all night, okay? So you should avoid the TV room, but if you do, don't assert your authority by changing the channel. Or if you're in there watching something and somebody comes in and changes it, big deal. It's not the hugest deal in the world, okay? But in, as I wrote about in Lessons from Prison, as I've heard about repeatedly, um, some prisoners want to assert their authority, and in Lessons from Prison, I wrote, this gentleman did that. And when he began to do that, some of the fellow prisoners began to taunt him and to sort of make fun of him. And um, the prisoner went and he ran to staff uh, to complain, essentially to let them know what was taking place. He had felt threatened. Typically in society, when you feel threatened, if there's something wrong, you will go to law enforcement. It's a totally different code in prison. There are rules, both written and unwritten. And an unwritten rule is you don't go run and tattletale to staff. And what happened following that complaint to staff is urine in his sheets, feces in his seats. He was a total, he was ignored. And he couldn't do anything big because he was always worried about what was next and how his prison adjustment was just disastrous as a result of doing something that many of us in society, which would do when you have a problem, which is going to staff or law enforcement. You don't do that in federal prison, I beg you. So don't assert your authority, don't try to taunt others, and uh, or don't let yourself be taunted by others. Be quiet, lay low, who cares what happens in the TV room, but avoid staff, do not speak with them. If they open the door, say thank you. Um, but they're not friends, they're not your friends. You shouldn't be talking about you know Monday night football the following day, you shouldn't be talking about what is your favorite sports team. They are paid to lock you up, they are not your colleagues. Avoid staff. A second tip, um, medical issues. Look, I'll be the first to acknowledge medical care in prison is lacking. Um, I have said, I think on a different video, these doctors who work in prisons, they didn't go to Harvard or Yale, okay? And while some of them have good intent, their first interest is to the prison and to keep costs down. They don't view you as their patient. You're essentially your BOP number. And at times, prisoners will not get the access to care that they need. That's just the reality. You can look at the BOP formulary list. You can project what medications you're going to get, but there are times they're not going to give you what you need. And there will be some prisoners in the compound who hustle, which I'll get into in a minute when I talk about tricks. But here's the tip. It is okay to, to borrow a pack of tuna from your bunkie or someone in the cube next to you. It is okay to get some Diet Coke or some granola or a banana. That's cool. You don't take medical pills and stuff. Because there are men who will go down to pill call. You're supposed to put the pill in your mouth and swallow it in front of staff. They're in la-la land half the time. So you don't swallow it. You take it back upstairs. You can trade for it. So some new inmates or prisoners who are struggling to adjust to prison life, who are not yet used to such levels of discomfort, may 
be swayed to take a sleeping pill that someone else is supposed to be taking but does not and they might give it to you and they might trade it to you. The problem is if you take a pill that's not on your approved list and they call you in for a drug test the next day and you fail it, you have a big dilemma. Who gave you the pill or do you keep your mouth shut? So there are aspects of confinement that are difficult. That's just the way it is. You're in federal prison. It is supposed to be uncomfortable at times. And adjusting at times can be tough, especially the first couple of months you're going to get sick a lot. At least I did, and I was fairly healthy. But you're in a dorm with a bunch of guys, and you're just adjusting. You're acclimating. So resist the urge to take a sleeping pill or something that could help you sleep that night. Because if you get drug tested and you fail it, you have a problem. But also some inmates snitch, and they can run to staff and say, so-and-so took this, and there could be some problems. So the the first trick or tip, avoid staff, avoid the guards. They're not your colleagues. Two, medical, medically it's tough in federal prison. Embrace it. Endure it. If you have problems, write cop-outs. Go to staff if you have to. But if it's something like I'm struggling to sleep, do not take a pill that is not on the approved list because it can lead to myriad problems. And I saw it happen several times. And it can totally derail your prison. You should be preparing to visit with your family to have an incredible experience in visitation of when you call home, they're excited to hear you and writing really wonderful emails. Good old snail mail. You can't do all that if you're taking pills and potentially getting into trouble. So that is my second tip. Let's go to some tricks. I've been asked about the prison hustle repeatedly. Did I hustle a little bit in prison? I did. I really understood confinement before I tried to manipulate it at all. So I urge all of you who are considering the prison hustle to fully understand confinement. I did not have money go to other inmates' books because that was an inconvenience inconvenience for my family. The last thing I wanted to do was tell my brother, like, hey, bro, there's someone over here in visitation. You're going to meet them in the parking lot. Go give them $400 to cover extra things I needed in the commissary. Many inmates do it. Some of my clients have done it. It is your choice. I chose not to. I chose to find other ways to increase my limit. And one... Uh, trick for you. Something that I did was uh, I worked with another prisoner who used his commissary very, very little. He hardly ate, but he was a voracious reader. So a few months into my prison term, he said, here's the deal. What if you order books for me and when the books come in, you give them to me and you give me a list and I'll shop for you in the commissary. And I said, that sounds like a, a pretty fair deal. So I got 100% of the value for new books, 90% for used books. So here's how it worked in practical terms. I might call home and tell my buddy, hey, dude, send me these three books. Go to Amazon and order them. No problem. He'd order them. They'd come to me at mail call. I'd open them up, wait a little bit, go into this gentleman's cubicle, give him the book. They're worth $40. I'd give him a $40 shopping list. It was a way to bump up my commissary limit. So that is a potential trick for you. If 360 in the commissary is not enough, if you have the budget to move higher, I would not exploit the system by having money go to other inmates' books or paying somebody to do your job. Those things can lead to a whole lot of drama. But with stamps or with books, it's a little easier to measure. And frankly, the prison or a camp, they do turn away from, from some things. Okay. Um, another quick trick. See the dentist quickly. Lastly, before you go in, you're going to see a lot of toothless dudes in prison, good guys, but uh, they're not doing root canals and stuff. They got a problem, they're ripping the tooth out. So watch your diet, eat healthy, and make that dentist one of the last trips you see before you go in. Some of these prisons have like a year waiting list, and if you have a short sentence, especially with the residential drug abuse program, you get in, you're going to get out. You put your name on a waiting list to see a dentist. By the time you get called, you're going to be in the halfway house. See the dentist before you go in. And lastly, I got a text message a few weeks ago from a woman whose husband is at Lewisburg, the federal prison camp, and wants to get into RDAP. And from I spoke with her and the PSR was good. It had some evidence. Things were, he was off to a decent start in federal prison, but this prisoner forgot or didn't fully consider, he might've got too comfortable in his surroundings, that phone calls are listened to and emails can be read. Now, I'm not saying staff is out in a go-kart, you know, in the yard, just listening to your phone calls. They, they might be. But they are recorded. And another inmate can say something to staff. I think you should go listen. And emails, of course, can be read. They sort of have these buzzwords that they might look for. And this prisoner said some things through email that wasn't totally commensurate or didn't fully align with what he was telling the people in the residential drug abuse program. And there was this dissonance that he was struggling and he needed some help to get out of. 
because here he said one thing to an RDAP coordinator and he said another thing through email and they're like, are you just one of those white collar offenders who doesn't really have a substance abuse problem but you want to get into RDAP to get the 18 to 24 months off? And it has taken some work to unwind it. So think 1984 and George Orwell. Big Brother is always watching, even if you don't think they're watching. And of course, they're still watching while you're on federal probation for 36 months, but I'll cover that in a separate video. So here are some tips and tricks for all of you who are going to serve time in federal prison. Medically, be cautious, hustle cautiously, avoid staff, see the dentist, and do not forget, phone calls and emails are recorded. I hope you found value in this short video. If you'd like a copy of Lessons from Prison, save your cash, it's free. Simply go to whitecollaradvice.com and I will send it to you. I was trying to think of something witty to say, but I actually couldn't find anything witty to say. So I'm just gonna default back to, if you'd like a copy of my book, um, I'll send it to you, but read it. Some of the strategies and ideas and solutions I talk about only work if you implement them. It's like the golf analogy. I've read a lot of golf books and I read it and then say, okay, go play better golf. It doesn't work that way. You have to implement them. That's the only way that it will work. Uh, so if you get the book, read it, and um, your journey will be easier. Thank you for your time. Subscribe to learn more. I'll be back soon with more videos. Bye-bye.